This is an INWA, International Nuclear Weapons Alliance, fundraising video. The INWA has no funds, except through your donations, to pursue a new international nuclear weapons treaty to reduce nuclear weapons in the world from multi-megatons to kilotons, the size of the Hiroshima bomb. Hi, my name is Peter Levin and I have a doctorate degree in business administration in public policy and government management. In addition to my academic education, I have experience in working for the United States military in long-range tactical weapons. Uh, the purpose of this video is to ask for money contributions to uh, raise uh, the ability to pay for offices and manpower and, and other expenses. Um, I appreciate your spending your time to look at this video and I encourage you to watch it to its completion. It's very valuable information. Uh, this is regarding the fact that the United States and Russia during the Cold War were locked into a vicious construction of uh, the maximum number of nuclear weapons that could be constructed uh, to see who could have the most and to maximize the size of nuclear weapons. The uh, United States has an international standard of size of nuclear weapons of 5 megaton, which is uh, the size of weapon which the United States government places in other friendly countries so that they can gain the advantage of being closer to a target to launch from another country rather than from our own homeland. Uh, whereas the Russian uh, uh, government uh, has a strategy where uh, they're placing their missiles also in other countries to get closer to the United States or some other target. Uh, but their missiles are much larger than ours. Uh, theirs are, are typically 25 megaton, 50 megaton, and 100 megaton, which are like uh, up to 20 times larger than ours. Um, and they are classified as T1, T2, and T3 type uh, nuclear thermonuclear warheads. Uh, these thermonuclear warheads uh, from as early as back in the 1960s, uh, Russia classified those nuclear weapons as uh, T1, T2, and T3, uh, which are designations uh, acknowledged by their government as meaning that they are planet killers. Uh, currently, the United States government is very concerned. Uh, they have made a public uh, announcement that uh, they're concerned that if uh, another country were to take uh, spent nuclear material, which is at the end of its uh, usefulness for creating electric power in power plants, uh, like more than 90% spent, uh, if that material could be surrounding, let's say, a, a plastic explosive or some other charge and strewn about the United States from a locale, uh, the United States government has said that that would make a dramatic change uh, in the way we live and forever change our lifestyle. Uh, if that is that big of a concern, imagine what actual nuclear material would be. The nuclear materials that were used in the construction of the Hiroshima and the Nagasaki bombs dropped, dropped on Japan uh, during World War II uh, at that time were the first atomic bombs that the United States made and they were only 40 percent yield uh, where now our nuclear weapons in the United States and Russia both are in excess of 90% efficiency in that respect. Uh, which means that uh, for those of you, of you that have seen uh, pictures of uh, uh, the nuclear detonation uh, of the one megaton, uh, excuse me, the 10 kiloton nuclear bombs that were used in, uh, in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, deliveries, uh, those were uh, only approximately 10 megaton, uh, uh, 10 kiloton, uh, those were approximately 10 kiloton in size, uh, thermonuclear uh, detonations, whereas now uh, the United States has 5 megaton and the uh, 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 ones that Russia have are 25, 50, and 100 megatons. So if you were to uh, let's say try to take the picture of the explosion that occurred in Hiroshima and move that up to uh, about 225 percent of the explosion that would occur to get to 90 percent efficiency um, 
of a 10 kiloton nuclear weapon, thermonuclear weapon, uh, and then uh, uh, divide uh, 10 kiloton into uh, uh, one megaton, uh, and then uh, make it that much larger, and then multiply that by uh, five to get to five megaton, I, I think you've already lost keeping up with me in picturing in your mind the size uh, and, and just how much devastation this would be. And, and uh, this obviously makes uh, these type of weapons, um, uh, weapons of mass destruction, which, which, we, which would classify them as uh, uh, weapons of, uh, uh, that would just kill people indiscriminately. Uh, and it's actually against the laws of mankind as well as uh, any higher beliefs that you have of God. And uh, uh, the uh, weapons are classified by the United States as uh, uh, strategic weapons. Uh, they also call them tactical weapons, but in, in uh, my belief is that uh, uh, strategic means that uh, you're just uh, total, totally obliterate, obliterating everything uh, in the weapon's path, where uh, tactical means you're selecting something uh, as a military target. Uh, in order for us to actually move out of this, uh, uh, this extremely large weapon size of uh, 5 megaton to 100 megaton, to get out of the uh, strategic sized nuclear weapon, uh, and, and return to tactical use, uh, we need to return to something that is, is more acceptable in size uh, that actually destroys only a target and not an entire civilization, uh, the civilian population, that the government is responsible for their actions and the civilians end up getting hurt uh, for their decisions. Um, in actuality, uh, Russian citizens and American citizens get along very well, and they like each other. Um, I've had some Russian friends that have come over here uh, to the United States, and we've been very good friends. And uh, I feel very happy to meet them and hope I get to see them again. Uh, but when the governments come together, there is some kind of uh, clashing, and uh, uh, this is where the problem lies, and, and this is the reason why uh, the civilians need to get back into an active status become involved in the situation because this is involving the, uh, uh, the continued existence of mankind. Uh, we can't continue down these lines. It's obvious that at some point with the uh, aggressiveness uh, in the world of countries towards each other, that nuclear weapons are eventually going to get used. I mean, they were used once already. already. So uh, uh, we have little confidence in, in uh, it being a fact that uh, they will be used again. Now the problem underlying in the use of nuclear weapons is that uh, both sides are always thinking about total annihilation and they're always guaranteeing each other that there's no survivors. Uh, the United States government is saying, you know, uh, we'll, we'll send over uh, uh, a minimum of six five megaton bombs on each missile so that we guarantee no survivors, because if we put all six of those bombs like uh, a mile or two apart and detonate them, we get a, a uniform uh, detonation uh, that there's nobody wounded, they're all gone, they're all history. Um, whereas the Russians uh, say, well, we guarantee it uh, even more because uh, the United States even admits that if Russia actually used a T3 100 megaton nuclear weapon against the United States and delivered it right over the center of the United States and detonated it, the uh, United States government has decided that the, uh, the uh, survival of the civilian population of the United States, of everyone here, uh, would be gone within two weeks' time. 96% of the population would be dead in two weeks and the remaining 4% uh, uh, of the population in the United States would succumb shortly thereafter. Uh, in fact, it, it's so, <clears throat> so provable by their statement the United States government made that uh, the, uh, uh, what they're saying is that uh, the country of Canada will be completely obliterated as far as populous and that two-thirds of the way down into Mexico, that would, the population of that, their country, Mexico, would be completely obliterated, and that the nuclear radiation that caused that 
uh, deaths would go uh, far out into the Atlantic, into the Pacific Ocean. So that is a very dramatic weapon. Um, and this is why Russia calls it a planet killer. Uh, they could use like uh, more than one of those and, and uh, uh, go to work in destroying the whole planet. Uh, as far as I know right now, Russia has uh, five 100 megaton thermonuclear weapons, uh, uh, possibly a sixth one which uh, Russia uh, may have and the control of, uh, through secrecy, just the uh, premier of Russia and so it really doesn't matter what happens with the other uh, 100 megaton thermonuclear weapons uh, if uh, the premier of Russia decides to, to launch uh, that particular one that he has in his uh, control, in his possession to use. Um, that could just uh, mean the end of the United States uh, based on one man's decision, the premier of Russia, regardless of his advisors. So uh, uh, for bringing this into focus, what I'm getting at is that uh, we, uh, what the INWA wants to do is uh, ask that all countries enter into a new international weapons uh, contract which will take all nuclear weapons that uh, can be used for war one country against another and reduce the size of any one nuclear weapon to a maximum size of 200 kiloton. Uh, 200 kiloton, of course, being 20 times the size of the uh, bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima, but once again, instead of 40% yield, better than 90% yield. So we're really talking about uh, probably about uh, uh, 100 times the uh, effectiveness of the one dropped on uh, Hiroshima. This in itself I consider to be absurd, but hey, I'd like to get all the countries on board to sign up on, the, on this contract, that everybody's in agreement that if anybody launches a nuclear weapon against another country, uh, the maximum size is 200 kiloton. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean everybody go out and build 200 kiloton nuclear weapons. It means the maximum size is 200 kiloton, preferably 100 kiloton. Hit happy medium, get in the center of things, you know, or make smaller ones. But in addition, that... Um, in signing this contract, uh, the secondary issue is that uh, in order to launch a nuclear weapon against another country of uh, less than 200 kiloton, um, that you would first have to uh, uh, ask the other country permission to, to launch that weapon against them because if they uh, uh, don't agree uh, to uh, participate in launching a return nuclear weapon against your country and then you launch a weapon against their country, when they're not planning on attacking you with nuclear weapons, uh, then you would definitely be in violation of this treaty uh, and there would be penalties. Um, without getting into the penalties, I would just like to say that, that uh, uh, our governments here in the world uh, have, have gone on the same path for too long. We've got too many weapons, too big, and uh, we need to start going the other direction because uh, we, need, we need to get the size of the weapons down. I mean, this is not like, uh, you know, uh, getting in a fist fight with somebody where everybody, uh, you know, wears a Band-Aid and then within a couple of days you're all better. This is like uh, in the days of the West where you carried a gun and you, you slung it on your hip. And when you got into a gunfight, uh, when, when the, the two guys pull their guns out and they're going to start shooting at each other, uh, the only person that stands to uh, uh, make profit off of this, uh, where good results occur, is the undertaker uh, to carry both guys to Boot Hill. So uh, in actuality, uh, what could happen is, you know, if, if the United States or Russia launches a nuclear attack uh, first and the other responds, uh, which is a high probability, then there's an exchange and the United States and Russia both get inundated with nuclear weapons. Um, that leaves nobody alive on the surface of the planet on, on those two countries. Um, the unfortunate uh, problem with this is where uh, just like one or two pounds of spent nuclear material that the United States is worried about being uh, delivered as a dirty bomb in the United States, changing the life of people in the United States uh, that would be, you know, a permanent change in the way we live here because our land would be uh, 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 dirty with uh, nuclear contamination where we would have to, you know, like uh, take a foot of, of earth and move it somewhere and bury it or we'd have to completely take, say, like 100 miles or whatever it is.
100 square miles, let's say, uh, of concrete to seal the stuff in. Uh, instead of just being a dirty bomb, if, if there's an actual uh, uh, exchange of nuclear weapons, uh, there would just be nowhere to live in the United States or nowhere to live in Russia. Uh, for example, um, I actually saw a, a map that modeled uh, what the United States would look like as far as uh, uh, not necessarily survivors, but usable land in the United States after an attack by Russia if they did not use a T1, T2, T2 or T3 bomb. Uh, if they used just smaller uh, nuclear weapons, and uh, there was a grand total out of two areas in the United States, there were only only 25 square miles total area in the United States, which can, which uh, includes uh, includes Alaska and Hawaii. 25 livable square miles in the United States after the nuclear attack by Russia, and uh, and then I saw another map modeled which uh, showed that after Russia uh, completely had uh, annihilated the United States uh, they would go back over the United States and look for uh, dark spots where nuclear explosions had not uh, covered yet and they would go back and they would get those areas that were missed and so there's really not 25 miles of survivable space in the United States so the only thing left to do is find out you know what it takes to not have a nuclear war. Now it seems like the military in Russia and the military in the United States and all other militaries in the world agree on one thing. There has to be the highest commander over the military and everyone else below uh, has to respond to that commander. And, and that's what we're lacking here in the world is we need that in our civil government, not just our military government. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like the idea of, of having one control over everyone in the world. But, you know, if you don't want to be annihilated, uh, you have to have uh, uh, some acceptance of this idea in order to have uh, some kind of a lifestyle where you have some privileges of continuing your life. Um, because, you know, Russia and the United States, like I said, the civilians get along together, uh, but the militaries seem to have some issues with each other. And um, it, it trickles all the way down into commerce where, you know, we have these uh, problems in the military where they decide, you know, we need to have embargoes, we need to have uh, taxes and tariffs and stuff to offset, you know, to keep a balance between, uh, uh, say, for example, Russia and the United States. Uh, and, and rather than have penalties where everyone is penalized, uh, I think what we need to do is, is, is work from another direction and, and have... Uh, uh, our militaries work together and say, you know, we're going to have a joint effort that's going to trickle all the way down into the civilian sectors. Uh, we're going to encourage uh, the enrichment of uh, the prosperity of our countries jointly. Uh, we're going to see that our citizens have more instead of less because we're spending too much money and, spin and spinning our wheels on, uh, on thinking about war when all that could be contributed to, you know, uh, increasing our educational systems uh, and, sp and spending more efforts in our civilian sectors uh, and wasting less money. Uh, so what I would like to do is, is ask that um, I encourage you to consider uh, as a civilian to become active and participate with me in this endeavor uh, to uh, work towards uh, moving the world into a uh, nuclear weapons control that will reduce the nuclear weapons uh, to a point to where like if, if, if one country sends a nuclear weapon over to another uh, the INWA nuclear weapons treaty would restrict them to where they couldn't send more than one nuclear weapon the initial launch and then they would have to wait and see if the other country sent a nuclear weapon back. And the country sending the nuclear weapon back couldn't send more than one.